All right, here's what happened. Here's what happened. Uh, last night, uh, I made a video to Poodle Susan trying to sort out the misunderstanding of why I thought she was saying that Thomas Jefferson should not be considered a rapist since that's what she, the argument, the context, the subject she was talking about. She never made that distinction. Well, yes, he was a rapist, but it was because of coercion. And so <clears throat> I'm not putting that video up waste of time. I don't think she wants to sort it out in that sense. So then I made a video this morning. I'm supposed to be saved now, transcoded, and be uploading right now, but for some reason it just didn't write the file. So I may upload that later. But right now, let me just summarize. One. Oops. One. Poodle Susan. What I still don't know is... Do you think what Jefferson did did is a kind of rape? So far you said, if it was rape, it was from coercion, not some other esoteric thing nobody but me understands, but you should all know by now, because I've thought about it a lot, but didn't really make it clear. Okay, the second thing that I made in this other video that maybe will go up, maybe not, depending if it's a pain in the butt, is still this issue of, uh, it is associational. And the reason I know it's associational is because you talked about ganging up and getting on the bandwagon and that I'm going to be tormented by a group of people that I'm trying to appease. Those are all terms about the association. Finally, Gary is a, not a rape apologist. I wouldn't call him a rape apologist because it's not really rape he's apologizing for, not even this specific kind, and certainly in general, he's no rape apologist in general, that's not a really good general characterization, but you could technically say here that he's apology making an apologia for what I consider slave rape, a kind of rape, but what kind of apologist would I call Gary? He's a fucking Thomas Jefferson apologist. And he has a lot of friends in history. Maybe it's an okay thing to be. That's the kind of apologist he's being called. And I'm about to make a video where I will help make clear to you people that what I think of Thomas Jefferson and why it's stupid to be an apologist for Thomas Jefferson. And I like his writing as well. And I've been through all of this as an American growing up where this deification. But when I face the fact of... of what kind of a man he really was in the end I still like that writing I don't think he lived up to him I don't think he deserves the benefit of the doubt as to why he didn't live up to them I don't th think he deserves a break for having human beings children wit so I think it's stupid to become an apologist because yeah it might make you technically a rape apologist if the guy you're being an apologist for uh, slept with his slaves and among people that consider that rape which I am one that exposes him to stupid arguments lots of apologists find themselves having to do stupid arguments about why oh well you know but at the times or oh but and whatever I forgot to write down associational terms like bandwagon, piling on, appease them. Yeah, a lot of people have accused me of appeasing others, Poodle Susan, but I can't remember anybody actually thinking they were appeased. It's usually like this, like, um, you're saying I'm appeasing people that also can't stand me. Great, just take sides if, on, if that's the, your important issue. All right, so now what comes is 
on Thomas Jefferson, the kidnapping rapist, innovator of slavery. <laughs>